Hello everyone. The following video was recorded in early 2023 and was shelved due to anxiety. It has now been completed, but that does mean since it's old, there's a mixture of new and old editing uh, styles. So forgive any kind of aged elements. Yeah, uh, and then let's let's just have fun with it. All right. All right. Cool. Roll the video. In the ancient days of the MP3 player, the Apple iPod cropped up and changed the scene. Many competitors existed. Some of their devices managed to beat the iPod at times, but these victories did not sway Apple. They continued to evolve the iPod until it was in its final form, the touchscreen digital media player, or DMP. At that point, it was unstoppable. Of the few that sought to copy this evolution, and even its success, one competitor's name stands out. Samsung. In all areas of mobile devices, from MP3 players to mobile phones, Samsung has played follow the leader. In the success of the iPod Touch, Samsung brought forth their own Samsung Touch. That very device is what we are here today to manhandle. Whoosh, the hat man. All right. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Today, as you uh, have seen, we are taking a look at Samsung's answer to the iPod Touch the Samsung Galaxy Player 5.0, which was released in 2011 alongside a smaller version at 4 inches instead of 5 inches uh, screen size. So I've been after this thing for quite a while. I originally got a broken one for about 25 USD early last year and I soldered a, a, <laughs> a mix-matched battery to it. I was uh, pretty excited to get one, but then I noticed that the USB port doesn't work. So here's that thing. It's uh, pretty beat up. Here's the battery I soldered to it. That is a phone battery from a uh, dumb phone. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, taped to the back and there's actually, let's see, let's pry this off right here. As you can see, there is a tether to the inside. Yeah, so this was not really a good final device. So then, um, last Christmas, I found a barely used, fully boxed unit for around 70 USD. And these things go between 50 and 60 when they're working and have no box. So I obviously could not pass up that opportunity. Forget this thing. Boop. Here we go. This is the uh, last one I'll have to buy, thankfully. Let's go ahead and take this bad boy out of the box. So, this awesome little guy, while derivative of known competitors, is still pretty, pretty good device. It runs on Android, it's got a 5.0 touch screen, it's got a 3.2 megapixel uh, back camera, and uh, a probably 1.0 front camera. I didn't realize it had a front camera until just now, so I didn't write down the stats for that. But yeah, front facing camera, 1 gigahertz processor, I think about a gig of RAM? Shoot, I didn't write that down. Uh, on the screen, you will see the RAM. Actually, on the screen, you should see everything, so it's fine. 8 gigabytes uh, internal storage, micro SD card slot, 2500 mega amp battery, Android 2, Wi-Fi, GPS, and a slew of formats that it can play. We'll get to that in a moment. Uh, yeah, and here in the box, we've got the little screen protector thing with all the logos that it would have had on the beginning. The seller was kind enough to, to replace it and have it ready in the box, but it is very dirty. In the box you get your manual, your USB cable, which is missing, and then uh, your headphones, the earbud replacement tips, different sizes, and the block. So I guess I have everything but the cable? Yeah, everything but the cable. Okay, now we're gonna take a look at the camera. 
I'm going to compare shots from a Galaxy S6 to this player. So what can this bad boy do? Well, first of all, boop, old games. See, I got Angry Birds, uh, Angry Birds Rio, Angry Birds Seasons on here. Because it's got a micro SD card slot, well, no, actually, because it has a working USB slot, I can sideload whatever apps I want that are compatible. Yeah, so you can do that. Cool apps. Now, in this year of 2020X, you know, my year is 23, but this could be viewed in the future. There are a few things that it can do, but the things that it can do are the apps and music, which of course is what it's for. So if you want something that plays, oh, I don't know, MP3, WMA, AUG, FLAC, WAVE, AAC, as well as uh, video files in the formats of DivX, MP4, WMV, and H.264, then this is a device for you. It can be a music device on top of a time capsule of games from the early years of Android, which is not a bad device to have around, especially since some of the surviving apps like Angry Birds are starting to disappear off of uh, the stores these days. It might be time to just have a separate device that is a, a time capsule. It's, uh, it's an idea. Something else that this thing can do The community, at least, has made it do is upgrade to Android 4, which I think I kind of want to do to it right now. So I'm going to go research it and see if I can make it happen, and if not, yeah, this that'll be the end of the video, I guess, because I really just wanted to show it off, like what it, what it does, talk about it for a, a couple minutes. I'm going to go um, look that up and see if we can't upgrade this to another version of Android. All right, so here's the process I went through. The first thing that I had to do was install the Android SDK because I thought I had to run the Android debugging tool called ADB. I searched online for it, I tried to install it, then I realized that I already had it installed. Uh, dingus moment. Yeah, I wasted my time on that one. I already had it. I then had to find a ROM for installing onto the device. This proved to be a little painful since the thing is old as heck and most related websites are gone. What I managed to find was a DOS Dude 1 video with a Cyanogen Mod version 12 tutorial. I was supposed to find version 9 through 11 to get to the 12th in succession in the tutorial, but it seemed to be impossible to find them, so I tried installing 12 just straight naked. Yeah, I was unable to even install 12 by itself. I would really needed that mod that he kept talking about called the Clockwork Mod. So I decided to try and find a different way to install the stuff and I figured I might need to root my device so I started searching there. And uh, that failed miserably due to more dead links and I almost got a virus. Uh, dingus <laughs> moment number two. I then found another DOS dude video and I tried that out. It was for a Cyanogen mod version 10.2. I installed some Samsung drivers, I then ran a program called Odin, and then installed the Clockwork mod finally, and I was successful. This mod provides a more robust bootloader menu. It's pretty cool. I then used the link in the description to get CM mod 9, and it wasn't dead. I flashed that and kept up with the tutorial until it came time to install CM10. That's when I decided to try and install 12 instead. It seemed to work at first, however, I noticed the clockwork mod was removed. I then rebooted and waited. Yeah, it did not boot. I waited for like 10 minutes. So I went back to CM9 successfully. I then searched for a valid download link for CM10, and I found uh, another DOS Dude website folder, and it had the consolidated downloads for all four of the versions. This wasn't linked in any of the videos, but I'm glad I found it. With this, I was able to complete the process of installing version 9 through 10 and 12 in succession. Everything works, so here's the final results, baby! Whoop! Whoop! Alright, uh, here we are. This is... 
this is now running Android 5. As you can see, it looks li just a little bit different. I'm also running the Xperia phone launcher from back in the day. And uh, check out all these games I got. Now that it runs Android 5, I can do more than just the oldest Android games, making this even more of a time capsule. It's a more of a wider range for, for t timekeeping. So, here's the ones I have installed right now. I have the World of Goo, SimCity Deluxe, Peggle, Jetpack Joyride, Fruit Ninja, Pac-Man Championship Edition, Angry Birds, Bloons Tower Defense 5, Qbert Rebooted, Minecraft Pocket Edition, Alpha, I think, 10.2 or something, Sonic CD, and Angry Birds Space. Now, these are pretty good games. It's a pretty good selection. However, it's only 12 games. As you might recall, this had an 8 gigabyte sto internal storage. Well, there's a caveat to the new operating system. As you can see, the internal storage is split. There's 5 gigabytes of stuff, and then the operating system is allotted to only 2 gigabytes, meaning the apps will only install on the first allotted segment of storage, not the second one. So right now, all I have left is 255 megabytes. That's one more big game and then maybe one more small one and that's it. So you can't really install a whole lot of big games. Now you're thinking, what about the SD card? Well, there's a glitch. <laughs> Unfortunately, it won't let me install on the SD card. As you can see, I've got a, about, about a 32 gigabyte card in there. So yeah, that didn't help. Very strange. I, I don't know what, what to do about that. Uh, there is actually there really isn't anything I can do. This is an abandoned project, so there's no uh, help for this. The uh, and I'm talking about this Cyanogen mod that I installed, by the way. Yeah, so there's no one to help. Anyway, I also installed the Walkman app for uh, music. It, this already has a music app built in, but I figured it'd be it'd be cool to <laughs> install another Sony app. So this is what it looks like. It brings you to a Listen Next page, and then you gotta click on this tab and that brings you to your main options. Nothing too fancy, nothing too fancy. It also reads Windows Music Player playlists. So I got some imported playlists here already. Yeah, so playing some of these games is fine. Some that I tried ran a little poorly, but there is a semi-decent number that can be played. Let's go to the uh, internal storage and I will show you all the apps that I was able to install. So this SD card probably is bad, but it's working for, for our purposes, so I'm not going to worry about it. Let's go to the app installers. Alright, let's go to the successful installs. So here's the apps that did install and actually worked. Dropbox, I actually didn't test if it went online, but it did install. Adobe uh, Reader is fine. Angry Birds Seasons, Original, as well as HD, they both worked. Uh, a game called Pac-Man equals 10 worked, it's a little number game. Angry Birds Rio, and this is an older version, as you can see, 1.4. Same with the Angry Birds Seasons and Angry Birds HD. The specific versions, these worked. Angry Birds Star Wars 1.5.13 worked. A version of Angry Birds Space worked. Bloons Tower Defense 4 worked. Doodle, Doodle Jump SpongeBob Edition, that worked with uh, slow load times, but playing it was fine. This game called Pack and Jump, that worked. Another version of Angry Birds worked. A, a app called Sony Sketch, that worked. Let's see, Dead Space for the phone, that was pretty cool. Flappy Bird, uh, Fruit Ninja Free Version 1.8.8, .8. Killer Bean Unleashed. Pac-Man 256 actually worked, surprisingly, that's a pretty recent one too. Pitfall, which is similar to uh, Temple Run. This is like an anniversary game published by Activision back in the day. Some crappy little game called All Stars Island, that installed and worked. Um, I forget the name of this, but this is a Prince of Persia phone game, that worked. This is some crappy Rayman Legends tie-in, it's not really a game, but it worked. Temple Run worked with <laughs> some caveats. Honestly, it's installed and played, but I don't think swiping to turn corners works, but it installed and played. So that's the large list that I have that installed and kind of worked. Now here are the ones that installed but did not work. Google Reader, Google Books, Google Earth, APK Pure, Call of Duty, Strike Team, Call of Duty Heroes, Catan Classic, Call of Duty Zombies, a game called Cogs, Five Nights at Freddy's, Mass Effect, Miss Pac-Man, Plague Inc., three different versions of <laughs> Plants vs. Zombies, 
Rayman 1 Anniversary Edition, Real Steel World Boxing, Samsung Music, the, the original uh, Smosh app from back when Smosh was kind of young and, and, and at their peak, Spotify, Super Mario Run, Tetris Blitz, The Sims 3, and YouTube. So those didn't work, unfortunately. Some of those I thought would, because they, they should run on, on, on under half a gig of RAM, but I don't know. Now, let's go to the apps that completely failed to install at all. Peggle Blast, Rayman Adventures, a higher version of Minecraft Pocket Edition, a lower version of Minecraft Pocket Edition, a completely separate app store um, for Amazon version of <laughs> Minecraft Pocket Edition, uh, a different version of Plague Inc., another version of Plants vs. Zombies, another version of Real Steel, Resident Evil 4 for the for the phone, another version of Samsung uh, Music, Spotify Lite, uh, the regular Tetris, another version of Sims 3, and another version of YouTube. So it's not a, not as big of a list, but if you combine this list with the list that didn't that installed but didn't work, it's very comparable to the list of apps that did work. So it's almost 50/50. So those are the games and stuff. Now music. I discovered that WMA does not read properly. The machine will play the files, but it won't read the metadata, which is very strange. Let's see, are there any, is there anything else that I've learned now that I have 5.0? You know what? I really don't think so. The battery life is fine. This has been on standby for like five days. The operating system seems to do everything an operating system needs to do. There's no real other flaws with this operating system. So yeah, this is Samsung Galaxy Player in its final form. Android 5.1. I guess the only thing left is to show you the inside of one of these players. So let's do that real quick. So here's that battery that I soldered on. So yeah, here's the inside. It's not a whole lot to see. It's just a little circuit board. Not much to it. I never really did notice that it has dual firing speakers, but backwards. That is such a strange design decision. Wow. Alright, it's got stereo on it, but backwards. <laughs> Alright, uh, good job there, Samsung, I suppose. Well, there you have it, guys. Samsung Galaxy Player, upgraded to Android version 5.1. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did, too. It was a lot of research involved in the latter half, and uh, I'm glad I got it done, because now this is a really good device. Like, like I said in, in, in the uh, first half, this can be a little time capsule of old Android apps to have, as well as a dedicated music device. If you're uh, itching for something a little ancient, with a little tinge of modernness, then this is an object for you to invest in. And uh, something it does have that the Walkman don't is cameras. So if you want some dinky little uh, cameras to feel a little, to feel retro, then you can uh, have that nostalgia from these older photographs while having your music and some games. Unlike with the Walkman, although with the Walkman you'll have a higher a higher battery uh, most likely and fidelity. But hey, it's up to you to, to decide what kind of use case you are in and what device you need. I won't tell you what's better, I'll just say this is kind of cool, so uh, check it out if you want to. And if there's anything else that you want me to do, uh, review that is, and, and unbox, just let me know and I'll try to hunt something I'll hunt something down. I've got some ideas already, um, so content shouldn't dry up in the future. I know it's been a while since the last up upload, but like I've talked about before, you know, things come up. So oopsie doopsie, I'll try to get the next video out faster. All right, um, that's enough rambling. Uh, you guys probably are yearning for the uh, next video for you to watch. Like, comment, subscribe, and then skedaddle on out of here and go watch that next video in your playlist. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out.